I thought you never told me you'd never ridden a moped before. You okay? You, you good? Got a little grass to the beard. I think we're good. You did a roll, man. <laughs> oh, my new shirt. Dang. <laughs> On this episode of Sally's Beach Shop, we go visit Junkyard Digs out in Iowa and get all of his old revivals running again. It's the revival revival. Yeah. Re revival. And it goes it goes all right. It was Stay good. tuned. So this time on Sally Speed Shop, we've turned into a mobile mechanic and we're in Ames, Iowa and uh, we're going to be helping Kevin work on a few of his projects because apparently he has some struggles actually getting some things done. Well, when you, when you have a million things, it's like impossible. He's making excuses back there. You probably can't hear him, but uh, yeah, we're going to get some of his junk running. So stay tuned. It's going to be interesting. So we came over to check out the one and only Thunderhead 289's cars he has sitting in his parking lot, and he's got his Ford pickup. Right in the trailer park. But what I'm all about is this guy right here, this Galaxy 500. And you drive this car every day? 70 miles a day. You want it? I think you like it better than I do. <laughs> it's, it's been extremely reliable. It goes down the road 85 miles an hour if, if you want it to. Which is pretty it's amazing because it's a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is a rad daily driver. I'm a fan. Alrighty, so we are at the headquarters of Junkyard Digs and Thunderhead 289, and I guess Junkyard Mook has kind of moved in too. But we're going to give you a little bit of an update on all of Junkyard Digs' projects, and he's got a few of them. I, I would actually need like someone else's toes and fingers to count everything. <laughs> I think you need like a whole like Excel spreadsheet yeah. for your cars. I have a list, and it's not been updated. And people are like, how many cars do you have? And I go... Somewhere around 24, I don't know, okay. <laughs> this one is one he's been working on for a while. They they couldn't revive it because it was so far gone. The engine was full of rust. So naturally you swap in a 455 from a Buick. Yep. Yeah, and then put it on 31 inch tires because that makes perfect sense. But this one actually runs. So maybe we'll fire this one up for you. And then back here is his Buick Wildcat with a 401, which is not in there right now because waiting on parts. Yeah, we but anyway, let's, uh, let's make some noise and make some cars run because that's what we're here for. We're not here to give you a project update on all of his cars. We're just here to show you where they're at and then fire them up and drive them. Well, we're gonna, drive some of them or gonna, catch them on fire. It could go either way. A full revival channel, revival. All the revival cars I still own, we're gonna make run again, if that's an option. We'll see how it goes. The ultimate... I don't have high hopes. I've seen the quality of his vehicles. A lot of them are Fords, so those ones are going to be fine. Anyway, let's fire up the, the 455 in this thing. We think we got to put the cap and rotor back on and dump some gas in it, and she'll, she'll go. So why'd you have this off? I have no idea. This is months ago. <laughs> right, right let's, uh, let's just put that back on. Well, you got to put this on first, Kevin. I do that every time. <laughs> that's, a, that's very important. It won't do anything without that in there. It's like the staple of our channel is that we forget the rotor every time we put something back together. All right, so we tossed a battery in it, hooked up a fuel jug with some gasoline and an electric pump. I have no idea where our timing is, and there's no vacuum vents hooked up, so it's not going to run great, but it'll run. It'll be fine. Anyway, let's fire it up. Ooh, fancy. Woo. That's open headers. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you can do me a favor, sir, and hit that key. I'm gonna keep this running. Alrighty. Do I actually use the key? Yeah. Right. Ready? Yeah. She runs. runs. That's all we needed to hear. Yep. There There's one down. That one was easy. The others probably aren't going to be that easy. Yeah. Alright, let's go outside in the next car. 
So here's another one of his projects, a beautiful Ford Thunderbird that he scored for exactly zero dollars. Crop duster? So you got this for free, got it fired up, and did burnouts. Yes, we did. Does it fire up with nothing? Are we not gonna have to do any work? I plug the battery in, and if the battery's alive, I think it'll light right off. All right, let's see. I think we gotta hit the hood on this one. It runs pretty okay. There we go. It runs somewhat okay-ish. Where is the? Th oh, there we go. Worn out 302. <laughs> battery's hooked up. All right, let's see how she does. If she does. Battery's dead. Battery's dead. All right, battery swap coming up. That battery right there that he just pulled out is from 2011, so that might be the problem. This is from like three days ago. Walmart batteries for the win. You know your vehicle's quality when the the dinger still works. That's nice right there. Dude, the interior's amazing. The rest of the car is just junk. It's basically an uglier Fox body. Oh, oh, she kind of ran. Even the headlight doors work. What? She runs good. Well, goodish. Look at this interior, though. Not bad for free. The radio works. Even the door light works. What? Wait, that's your horn button? Yeah, I know, right? That's weird. What a machine! You know, just a little duct tape here and there. She'll be, she'll be good to go. Straight race car. What? Even idles. All right, on to the next one. Yep. She is good to go. So. You guys might recognize this vehicle from a recent episode of Junkyard Digs where he bought two crappy old tow trucks and got at least one of them running. So far, yeah. So I've actually been here in Iowa for a few days and we went out to the other tow truck and tried to get it running and there's going to be a whole video on that deal. Part two of the tow truck revivals. So you're going to have to check out his video to both see this vehicle run because we don't have batteries for it and to hopefully see the other one run. We don't know yet. Yeah. It's kind of worn out. It makes some noise so far, but... Yeah, we need some more ether. Hopefully tomorrow <laughs> we figure that out. <laughs> now we are done in Ames. We're going to drive up to my old shop. Go back to videos that were a couple years ago now before we had the shop here. And check out the, what I call purgatory. This is where everything sits until we know what to do with it. And there's a lot of stuff up there's there. There's a lot of stuff. Most of it's Ford, so I'm going to be out of my element. Should be totally fine. Should be easy. Nope. Oh, and uh, there's this thing too, but... Yeah. You'll you'll see that later. We'll talk about it, it's, that. It's fine. You didn't see anything. We made it to Kevin's childhood home where he keeps all of the junk that he has pulled out of various farms in Iowa and revived. And he seems fairly confident that all of these vehicles were going to put a battery in, put some gas in it, and they're going to fire right up. And I'm a little more skeptical. I bet most of them we don't really have to turn wrenches. We got to put carbs on too. Other than that, they should light right off without very much trouble. Yet to be determined. We're, we're kind of like... There's no bed involved, but I'm not expecting it to be as easy as he said. He's and look, like, we got ourselves a bit of a storm coming. Yeah, we, so we also have a time crunch. Just like Iowa, we're out here in a cornfield and it's going to be a tornado, <laughs> so we got to get it done quick. Do y'all have one of those basements we can crawl into? Uh, I think we just get under the Camaro. <laughs> oh, perfect. They're invincible, right? Camaros? <laughs> Let's see how this goes. So you got your tang tools. I got my random collection of stuff I like. Let's Gas, a battery, and 
a two barrel and a four barrel carburetor because he likes to steal parts off of this collection of vehicles here. Yeah, welcome to Purgatory. So I think we're gonna start with that third gen Camaro that we've got from my brother. And he actually wound what up like- What a beautiful machine. He actually wound up like dailying that. After we made that video, we bought it just for him to learn. And it worked great, it never gave him any issues. Did he spontaneously grow a mullet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's begin. So this third gen right here has a bit of a flat tire going on and Jesse, well, not only wants to fire this car, he wants to drive it off into the sunset. So we're gonna put some air in that guy and uh, see how it goes. Does this already have a battery in it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, why don't I open it? Look at that, side post and everything. Oh, and it's a V6. It's not even the junkie 305. It's that really tall, what was it 60 degree? Where they're like, Wee. Yeah, they're very skinny. 2.8, Jesse? That is a powerhouse right there. It sounds like a tractor, it's hilarious. <laughs> Make like 73 horsepower or so. <laughs> Good day down a hill, you can do 35 miles an hour. Is it gonna take air? We need more air than the tank. Do we? Yeah. Do Just go for it. You got, you're up, you're like 40 something pounds. Oh, it's working. There we go, there we go. Run. You only need about 20 in it to drive it. I'm always amazed at how tires can be totally flat and all messed up on the sideball. You put air in them and they come right back. I don't, I don't drive on like those. This. You daily drove on these. Perfect. Oh, God. There it is. <laughs> right after I said I don't drive on these, I was like, yeah, I drive the hell out of this. It's fine. <laughs> but remember, it only makes 37 horsepower, so it's not going to do anything. <laughs> all right. Get in there and turn the key. Oh, perfect. <laughs> what a fine automobile. Dude, this is great. <laughs> Look at the fender. It needs to be a rally cross car. Look at that. Straight race car. One for one, but the first one was a Chevy, so that's not fair. Wait till we get to the Fords. <laughs> All right, let her eat, bud. And just like that, he was gone. I think it died. <laughs> okay, it's a service truck, I guess. I'm not gonna do that with that. That's how yeah. Oh. oh, he's still off ripping. He's going literally off into the sunset. What a majestic creature that is. <laughs> he, he's flat out gone. <laughs> I wonder if I had any gas. Oh, he's gonna run out. We're gonna have to go drag him back. Yeah, probably. So we're doing this next, or are we gonna wait and save our batteries for that well, guy? We need side posts for this because it's a Chevy, and the only side post I have was in that car, which is now <laughs> rocketing back towards us at a breakneck speed of 35. And look, it even went out on the road and came back. So Chevy has one in the books that works. We need your parts. Yeah, we need to steal your battery. All right, so out of the Camaro into the service truck. This is probably way too small. Yeah, look at how tiny. How many? We got 590 cold cranking amps. That's fine. You work great. In a what's that? Is that a six five? Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> this tiny little tiny little guy. Come on, you can do it, bud. We believe in you. Oh yeah, that's a must. There we go. Oh, goodness. Oh, hey, no new mouse nest or squirrels or anything. That's always good. They are, okay. So we got one here. Oh, we got a Megatron over here. That'll help. God bless the side post. What? Not. <laughs> it's the worst thing ever. All right, GM is good in a lot of ways. Why did you have to use side post batteries? The worst thing since Phillips had screws. I'm sure this is riveting footage. But Kevin says to put all this stuff in and your videos will do better. What do you guys think? Put it in the comments, because I'm curious. Do you want to watch us install a battery or do you want me to skip ahead to the car trying to start? Okay, well the battery is a little excessive. <laughs> when you're rebuilding carburetors and stuff, people love to see that. I don't know, do you guys like to see it work actually get done or are you just here for the highlights? Is I don't know. I, I feel like there's two crowds out there. There probably are. 
question is which one's larger. <laughs> the question is how many Cheetos did you eat while you were watching this video? Uh, were they the jalapeno? I don't know, it depends. Are you a have... Puffs guy or a Crunchy guy? They better have been the jalapeno ones. <laughs> Those are good. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run this to the prime sequence to make sure we have fuel where we need it. I need to open this guy on the top of this fuel filter. Looks like we might already have fuel. Then we're gonna run the electric lift pump, which is superior to what those Fords had where it was all mechanical. So I can actually do that without wasting battery. That was a lot of fuel. I wonder if it runs better now. Oh yeah, you couldn't get this thing above like 12 miles an hour, right? Well, the question is, is it dripping on the ground anywhere? I have no idea. I do not see anything. Okay, let's um, crank it and make some smoke. So Kevin is for some reason doing all the work that I thought I would be doing on his vehicles. And he actually just ran. Oh look, he's running back. He's got the booster pack from his mom's truck. <laughs> I've never seen this man run before. It's not exactly pretty. Okay. Uh, who knows? <laughs> Three lights. The old one has two lights. I think it's going to miss us. I don't think this is going to really do much, but we'll try. Ready? <laughs> Something over here is smoking. Oh, dude, these battery terminals aren't even tight. We're trying to crank with one battery. Did I not? I haven't tightened it. Oh, no, you gotta ram them actually down. It's not gonna do anything. It's tight. I mean, it's gonna rip out of the battery. Get... Oh, wait. Why is that happening? Oh, because there's two bolts here. Oh, you have a nut on there. Yeah, you gotta run the nut into the... It's because of the accessory stuff. I bet it cranks straight now. That might help. Let's put the booster pack on just in case. I saw it start smoking and I'm like, hmm, high current with resistance. What's happening over here? All right, go ahead, Jesse. The one Do thing the... I touched, great. <laughs> Come on! Ho, 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 ho! Now we're talking. I believe in you, Chevy. I just need a little pat. Well, there you go, she runs. Kind of, yeah. I think there's a lot of boost leaks, timing issues, and PDM issues, and oil filter, or what, fuel filter issues. But yeah, it runs, yeah. Listen to it just clattering away. I think that's just quieter than those seven leaves. I think so. Look at that! Another Chevy running. Not very well. It took a second to get going, but uh, it is running. So this thing uh, might be for sale here pretty soon. You got the pit stop on farm tire service. But it's got the, the lift gate on the back. It's got a crane back here to lift uh, heavy things up and a whole bunch of full throttle energy drink cans. Yeah, why full throttle? Full throttle is trash. Yeah, this guy did not have good taste, whoever, whoever drove this thing. It's ready to work, so. If you wanna buy it, let me know. If you give me enough money, I'll let you keep the crane. Otherwise, I want that for a uh, engine hoist, 3,000. Nice, but... man. What a machine. So we're gonna let those batteries charge for a minute, but uh, it's time to move on to the next one. Okay. Next on the agenda is a Ford. We haven't touched a Ford yet. This one. Pretty good truck. I like it. It's a worn out 352, 360, 390 FE. Oh goodness! With a carb we rebuilt in the middle of the winter and tried to get it running once for a junkyard move video. Let's get you guys in for a closer look. All right, I'm gonna hook up the battery. Look out for smoke. Nothing happens. So. We're good. So somebody hit this truck where it was sitting. 
It's got a nice little dent. Runs down the hood and all the way into the windshield. So they really didn't know what they were doing when they were backing up. Because they, they went about four feet over the front of the truck into the window. Ooh, it's nice in here. I mean, a little bit of duct tape. That fixed things over there. But otherwise, it's got a headliner in it. And I like the color of the sea foam green. The bed floor is actually solid on this thing, too. And there's the mirror that's supposed to be over there, so you even got that. Door shut's good. I like the graphics they got on it. This one here is special, too. It says it right on the side. Oh, yeah, the other camper <laughs> part broke off, so now it's just... <laughs> it's just special. The poor thing is filling the engine with gas, so that's, that's good. Perfect. It is, like, pouring inside right now. I think we got enough fuel in it to at least fire it. It's probably enough to potentially hydro lock it. We'll see. I don't want it to fall into the sand. Just so. a little bit of gas up top. No big deal. Yeah. Does this one have keys? It do. It's a luxury vehicle. Okay. Right, here we go. So, there's one Chevy that was really easy, one that was not so easy, and now the Ford has come in with a strong contender. And that was even flooded, like worst case scenario, and it's like, yeah, it's fine. Zing. Now he, what? He might have been right about his cars, but uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. There's still more to go. That one's a Dodge. So oh yeah, Dodges are weird. There's gonna be a 50-50. <laughs> oh, and we only have one battery, so we're just kinda, we're just kinda moving it from car to car. Back in the storage mode. I don't know what Mook is up to, but she has hijacked the tractor and is off to tear something up, I'm sure. I feel like we should be worried about the scene in front of us right now. <laughs> we definitely should be. She's going to go tear something up. Such an Iowan scene. Just driving off into the cornfield. <laughs> On the theme of clean interiors, we're going to move into this van, which has, like, showroom, brand new interior. Oh, my goodness. It is nice. Look at that Look at the cloth there. insert, too. Like it's perfect. It was a wheelchair van out at some farm in the middle of nowhere. It smells kind of like a old musty house, though. Yeah, I don't remember smelling this bad last time. Wanna <laughs> pop that clip on your side? Oh yeah, this is uh, you got the old dog house. I think it's already loose. This is the one nice part. And done. Is this 318 cubic inches of fury? It's actually, a 360. Really? It's a 727 behind it. Man, I believe so. Actually, he's a that's a good guy. combo. I put the battery in. Correct. I guess we'll pull this guy off. Okay. All right. Let's see if she still cranks. Battery's hooked up. The nice thing is when you have a backfire through the carb and it catches on fire, it burns your dash. Yep, see it? <laughs> this is all that stuff that flew into my eyeballs during the revival video of this one. Lovely. We did it. Okay, fuel. Somebody, for some reason, spray bombed over all the little rust spots on the outside. And it really, uh, they did a quality job there. That's what you want it to look like when you're done. It's like they just spray bombed it and didn't have any regard for how much paint they used. Cause look, it's like there's runs everywhere. <laughs> Beautiful. Thanks. Does it have 122,000 or 22,000 miles? Um, how's the pedals? They look really good. I honestly, with this interior... That gas pedal is still perfect. I would not be surprised if it's only 22,000. This looks like 122, but it's also a Dodge. Yeah. Does the horn work? No. The dome light does, though. Look at that. <laughs> it's amazing. What about the Max AC? <laughs> oh. What? The alternator works. Wait, if you turn the fan on and you turn... Ah, no. <laughs> right into the carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So we're hooking up our auxiliary fuel system, and we're just gonna see if she runs. It is toasty. Take so the hat off. Uh, if you want to buy one of those, those are for sale on the website. And if you want, want to buy one of these, he makes those. <laughs> he doesn't know how many he has for one. sale. Oh, I'm not wearing your shirt. <laughs> I'll talk to Dylan. <laughs> I know there's no accelerator pump because we rebuilt this car. To rebuilt this car. We got all the poop out of the bottom of it. But uh, yeah, let me just shove this in here. Yeah, you run that. I'll run the gas and this stuff. Go ahead. We got a fire extinguisher. I think I'll just wipe my brow onto whatever the fire is. <laughs> go out. All right, you ready? Yep. Oh, a Dodge is actually going to run. The gas. Oh, yeah. Gee, what is that noise? That's is that the Dodge starter? starter yeah. Yikes. Fighting us is this is not letting fuel in. Yeah. To the vents, so we have to do this a bit till she lets it breathe. All right, ready? Yep. God, that starter sounds bad. I know, right? <laughs> oh, my thing ran out. <laughs> kind of. I need a new can. <laughs> She ran dry. Yeah. It's a little toasty in here. I got sweat dripping off of places I didn't know I had. <laughs> it's like literally about to drip off my eyebrow. <laughs> not good. So now that that one kind of ran, I'm not going to call that like an ultimate success, but it's a Mopar, so gets a handicap. But we're going to take the battery out of it and move on to the next vehicle. The Mopar guys are going to hate me. Oh, goodness. What a cute little hood. All right, what's the deal with this truck? So this one we pulled, we pulled actually both of these. This one, the one we're about to do. We pulled these out of a farm, kind of by where that van was. Uh, they were both sitting for 10 years or so, and they both fired right up and drove out from the day I've owned them. With that being said, this one doesn't have a carburetor. Perfect, so we're just gonna so, have to figure something out. Oh, it's right there. That one's got the secondary, Good. There's an MSD box in this thing? This old guy was a circle track racer back in the day. And he put like performance parts in all of his cars. And they have, they've got like AMS oil, oil filters. Hey look, you got an Excel coil, MSD box. Yep. And it had a Holly two barrel carb. Which ironically is what we're putting back on. It's just a different one. So we got bolts already. Which yeah, is... we need a gasket though, which I forgot. Yeah. That's not good. Well, he's off looking for a two barrel gasket. I'll show you guys the rest of the truck. It's got a dump bed on it. Well, kind of had a dump bed on it. Most of it's missing. Um, but the structure is still there. Well, for the most part. But look at these cool tires. I mean, they're super old, but really cool tires on it. Kind of that agricultural pattern. You see a lot of times. Look at the angle of the rear axle. Look at like this. Oh, this is way forward on this yeah. side, isn't it? <laughs> yep, this thing drives on the road like this. So apparently this truck was rolled and they put a different cab on. Okay. I don't actually know what the chassis is. I think it might be a 70s Ford. I don't know. I'm clueless. But this is what it is now. I'm amazed at what rust does here. Like, that bolt is almost gone. Look at the, the whole bolt is almost missing. I, Iowa things. Not something I would ever want to be in. This is sketchy, like, yeah. <laughs> Very secure. Like Four speed with a granny gear? Yeah, granny gear. Nice, and look He's at the gauges over here. The These gauges. is cool. The dude was an old racer. It was pretty sweet. And this thing actually, for a 352 and a two barrel, it had some nuts. Nice, man. I like no, how there's like clear right. evidence of squirrels living in here too. Like they have been eating everything. Oh, oh nice. Oh, my gasket. Ow. Yeah, I found this on the Thunderbird. It's the only one I can find today. <laughs> Good. Okay, yeah, fire it up. <laughs> yeah, let's put some bolts in first. Let me actually do some work on one of your vehicles. It says the Kevin revives his own vehicles on my channel. <laughs> Tighten that sucker now. We'll see if she seals. I just remembered this truck has an electric fuel pump. So we don't need to put anything down the car because we can just turn the key. You're getting fancy on me over here. No, it wasn't me. It was the guy before you? Yeah, he put all this on. Race car. Dude, this thing was like his race dump truck. 
Here. All right, let's see if this old 352 comes to life. You want to turn the key, sir? I can do that. We'll let the, I believe it's see. We'll see if the electric pump still works. We'll let that fill her oh, up. Gotta... Just turn the key on for a second. Oh, the key on the left side. That sounded actually good. Oh, I hear fuel. Yeah, it's good to go. You ready? Uh, make sure she's in neutral. I got it in neutral and I have my foot on the clutch. All right, go okay. ahead. <laughs> Well, there you go, she's running. It's another one in the books for the Fords. Dang Fords. It's not tuned at all, but yeah. But she runs, fired right up, didn't even hesitate. Well, hey, actually, what's the crazy? What? All the electronics on this truck work. So, like, all of this stuff? Yeah, like, all that works. You got oil pressure, you got vacuum, it was working. Oh, the, lights the volts. <laughs> lighter, I did it again. <laughs> the lighter. The lights all work. I think the blinkers work. Yep. All right, on to the next one. Let's turn her off. Shut her down. Watch this. That's how the revival went in the video. It was like... It just fired right up? Yeah, I just drove it home. Or out of the hole, I guess. Like, well... So we got to take our carburetor, our battery, and move on to the next one. On to the next one. What's the story with this one? So this one came from the same farm as that one. And just like that one, we pretty much gave it fuel and it fired up. So I'm hoping that happens again today. This is a 78 F-150 with a three-speed on the floor, I believe, and an inline six. And this is the correct color for cars, in case you're wondering. Green. Bondo nice green. bug deflector. Yeah. <laughs> oh, inline six power. This is this a 300? It is a 300. It's a 300. I believe. We drove this from Luke's video and parked it, and I've never touched this truck since. So it's not actually mine. The guy's supposed to come pick it up, but I can't get a hold of him anymore, and we need some parts. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're missing a DuraSpark box. Okay, yeah, that's a good sign. This, okay, we're gonna There have should to, be an ignition module right there. We have there. to get one of those, and then we can make this work. <laughs> I didn't think of that. The nice. only thing stopping me is myself from former times taking all my parts. Damn you, past Kevin, <laughs> making future Kevin's life hard. And again, Kevin's off looking for parts. So, I'll give you an overview of this truck. Oh yeah, real quality, quality machine there. Look how much the bed moves. <laughs> oh gosh. There is no bedside left. That's pretty bad. But there is some floor. A couple holes for ventilation. The sound system really, really bumps in this thing for sure. What's the inside look like? And it's green too. I love green interiors. The fancy uh, fake wood burling with the word custom on it. That's how you know it's really good. The seat is beautiful. What do you think of his machines? God, it smells horrible. <laughs> it smells like dead rats in this truck. Oh, look, it's got a Clarion, though. That's a nice actual head unit. I don't know what's going on here. I'm not even going to dig into it because that's probably where the smell is coming from. But somebody clearly cared about this thing because they ran seafoam through it. <laughs> what a machine. I will say one thing I love is dealership badges. Wilbur, West Union, Iowa. So this has been an Iowa truck its whole life. And that would explain all that back there. That is that is crusty. I am victorious. Kevin found it. I found a DuraSpark box just sitting in a truck. Because <laughs> you need them. Because they fail all the time. So you just bring extras. If you have one of these and you're running a DuraSpark in your Ford, carry one of these around. Actually, that's just a good idea for whatever cars have whatever systems. And it's so that early uh, like electronic ignition was just like early fuel injection. It just didn't work most of the time. <laughs> Look at this cute little one barrel carburetor. All the power through that thing, all of it. All right, what's going on? 
the starter solenoid's gone. <laughs> so now we gotta go take one of those off another truck? Or are we just gonna like bump um, wires together? I should be able to hotwire it pretty easy. I did not anticipate myself making this so hard. Yeah, you keep I stealing parts. Yeah. Stop it, Kevin. Well, this one's the parts truck. <laughs> yeah, look, that wire is supposed to connect to the solenoid. So and... All we have to do is power these three. Yeah, just touch these together. I'm not gonna, okay, I'm gonna leave this disconnected for now. Zip these guys together here. It looks like he wants power. Let me uh, test this cranking system. Oh goodness, is it in neutral? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Is it in neutral? Hang on, don't. Oh, good call. Don't, don't do it yet. This looks like it's not in well. Just saying. Oh boy, here go. Woo! I heard the starter click. That is toasty. Perfect. Okay, yeah, everything's fine. So let's not spill gas in this one and put it directly into the carb using the fuel hose. Precision. Oh, it's leaking around the bottom of the car. Yeah, I don't know why I'd do that. Inline six one barrel carbs love to do that. I, I don't, don't know, know why. why. Ready? I'm gonna give her a little throttle somehow. Can I use the gas pedal inside? Yeah, you should be able to. Ready? I guess. Hmm. Science. And some of these wires here might not be connecting either. Ready? That is not satisfying. Sounds like we do not have spark. Um. Oh. This needs power. You Duh. need a wire hooked up that you don't have hooked up? Yeah, yeah. that'll help. I need to hook up whichever one Because that needs. sends power over here. Yep. It's not on because it's not on. Yeah, you got to connect all those wires over there together. Mm. <laughs> got to go check a wiring diagram, which is actually just another vehicle. Yeah, so these guys uh, send power to your ignition and all that good stuff. So that's important. Wiring witchcraft. So we need a starter solenoid, as you saw earlier. We don't have one, <laughs> but this does. This lovely, what's left of a cougar. Yeah, I'm pretty positive this will not work at all, but this will give us everything we need to cross. Was that a battery this. joke? A polarity joke? You're positive it won't work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's steal parts off of that carcass, because that is virtually... It looks good on this side. Let's go to the other side. Not quite as good on this side. So we're just gonna slap this in there and hook everything up and try this again. I will yeah. be absolutely blown away if this thing actually works. There's a Wouldn't chance. That be nice? There's a chance it works. So then there's a good reason you bought the Cougar. Yeah. If that works. You bought it just for a starter relay. This just feels so wrong. I'm putting a really rusty starter solenoid on a parts truck. That's what uh, YouTube's about. Doing things that make zero sense. Just for entertainment purposes. Yup. We hope you guys appreciate this. Yeah, because it's not exactly smart. If you do, like and share the video. And if you're curious where all these vehicles came from, you can go to my channel, Junkyard Digs, which I'm sure you've probably seen Jacob's shirt by now, so that's a little redundant. But yep. if you liked what you saw here and you are from my channel, please guys, do this guy a favor. The uh, rebellious Jacob Davis, who has left places with names I'm not going to mention and is going to go out on his own. So like, subscribe, check out what he's got. He's got some pretty sweet stuff. I'm going to be blown away if you get in and throw that key and this engages and cranks the motor. Okay, sir, go hit the key. Let's see if we're going to be amazed or get what we expect. Let me give these a little bit of a chance. Go ahead. Oh, what, what was that? <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, uh, hang on. <laughs> Let me, I guess, tighten this more or something. That was, that was interesting. All right, you in neutral? Yep. All right, give her a crank. Ha, 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 ha. Not only does it work, but it fired right away. It just needed some ignition. Yep. Who knew? You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I know what's happening here. Um, You're losing power as soon as I let off. Yeah, let off the key, it dies, which means it is the. Do, 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 do. 
Was that the ballast resistor that does that in these trucks? <laughs> So smooth too. Another board. This one fought us and fixed itself. I mean, apparently it didn't want us to think about things. It just, it just wanted to do whatever. I don't know. So now I'm gonna go turn off the key. I meant that no turns it off. Does that make sense? Perfect. So yeah. It runs. Next truck. I can't believe that's car. how it works. Yeah, that sat that's, on the open in that car for 30 years, probably. That's just a testament to the Ford ignition solenoid being so good. All right, so uh, I don't know what's next. Is it another I truck or a car? I think the TR7 is next. The Triumph. Ooh, we're getting fancy. So now we're moving on to something weird. Why do you have a Triumph TR7? So this came from the same farm as those last two trucks, but like six months later. And this is the one of the Iowa State Band Director members' cars. It's not in terrible shape it's for an Iowa a, car. It sat in a shed for like 30 years. And look at how stylish and sleek it is. You can have it. How about that? I don't know if I want it. Yeah, look at that. There's actual grass. There's no light getting in through there. I don't oh, through the through the vent. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? I was doing it over this way too. Oh my, that's insane. <laughs> that's kind of amazing. That's nuts. So. The carbs have actually totally been rebuilt, so we should just have to give this thing fuel and a battery and light it off. But it's we'll see how it goes. It's a Triumph, so probably not. Got my carb plugs Here. out. Sure. We'll go for it all at once. Yeah, let's just... Oh, this is a sporty little thing. It's in. It's a manual, too, so make sure she's in neutral. Whole engine moves. You ready? Yeah, I think so. Nothing. Oh, hang on, I'm remembering something. Oh, this car is low. Is it neutral? Yeah. Oh my gosh, what? Yep. What? <laughs> that technique, that technique was amazing. It took years to master. I also sprayed my hand a bunch. Oh, you were just cleaning it off. <laughs> that thing ran so easy. Look at this little car too. I mean, the lines of it, they're just nice. Dude, if you want this thing, I will strap it to the back of your Elko and send it south with you. All of this stuff's for sale, by the way. Shoot me an email. <laughs> What's the email? Uh, junkyarddigs1 at gmail.com. I'll put it in the description down below. Mopar. All these cars run. There's still time. There's another Mopar yet. Yeah, there's a satellite right back there that we're about to touch. But this thing, what? Ugh, it looks so abandoned and dilapidated. <laughs> it fires right off. That's crazy. And now we're on to this beautiful thing. So what's the story with the satellite for those who don't know? So myself and Thunderhead 289 spent a week in Keokuk. We went down in our van out in the woods and revived this car and then did a big burnout and some donuts and trailered at home. And we do have plans for it in the future. For now, it's just sitting here waiting for delivery or to be picked up. Nope, whatever. we're gonna revive it. That's yeah, what we're, we're gonna, gonna do. Re revive it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound right. That just sounds weird. But anyway, that's what we're doing. All right, let's set up the camera, get to work. It might not be bolted on. I don't think it is. Oh, secondary. Oh, it's hot. It is very hot. Oh, we should probably just pick it up if it's not. We'll but go, we might need gloves. We'll go onto that bed. Oh, it's toasty. Ooh, this hurts. Ah! I feel like we're in Arizona, but rusty and humid. Oh, good times right here. Oh, there's no carburetor. Perfect. So well, this is a two-barrel uh, 318 with an adapter for a four-barrel. And we did put a four-barrel on it. And all the hardware's still here. Good. Was the adapter on there, or did you guys put no, it on No, we there? put that on. We siliconed it into place and all sorts of goodies, so... There's no smoke, we're good. And look at this, fine quality. Is that a lamp? Yep. That's a, what? That's how I lost a- uh... Hang on, I gotta show you guys this. <laughs> look at this. They've got a 
like a lamp on off switch <laughs> connected to a string that goes into the car and then a momentary switch oh it still turns the car over i didn't even mean to do that it wow it's been out in the weather for how long and it's still just <laughs> that's amazing that's and then this is ignition yep <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, we're going to put this on there and fire the sucker up again. Perfect. It's still alive. The bolts for the carb are still sitting right here. And the return spring. I think we planned ahead. I don't know. They've rusted since then. They've only been here for 10 months. It's maybe. just because they're near this thing. And we were talking about all the rust. It's uh, it's go, pretty extreme. While I'm bolting this on, you should go take a look under the rear end of this car. So Kevin wanted me to come look around the back here and find some of the rust for you guys to see. The molding is clearly not connected to the vehicle anymore. Let's see what she looks like underneath. Oh man, look at that frame rail. That is crusty. The gas tank is missing the entire bottom of it. Wow. That's pretty crusty there. Ooh, that's aggressive. Yep, she's a mint condition, factory fresh, never seen rain or snow. This is what happens to Mopars in Iowa since they were so poorly, like, rust corrosion protected. Not, none of them live. That, that front end is just, that's money right there. It's got the red, white, and silver in it. America! It is the 4th of July. It is. Yeah, happy 4th of July, everyone. It's probably like the end of July right now. I don't know. Yeah, who knows when the video will get done. It might be October. One of the many bad things with a lamp chain is you don't know if the ignition's actually on or off. You just gotta crank till it starts, it doesn't. Perfect. What? We didn't even do anything! Oh! You're sucking crap down the carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> he like sucks some leaves in. <laughs> Bumper dry. Ta da! What a machine. Those 318s are pretty good motors. I'll give Mopar that. They are hard to kill. And they make really good looking cars. Now, if only they were like really good made cars. All Mook Rot slushies. I found vodka. <laughs> oh, yes. Cheers to another car. All right, so we finished all the vehicles that are up there in that little parking area. Now it's time to move on to one of the best revivals that these guys ever did, the Ford F-250. Oh, man. So if you've watched any of their channel, you saw them struggle to revive this thing and get it out of a hole it had been in for a lot of years. So what's the story here, Kevin? How did this one go? This is where it all started. This is the 1965 F-250 we found out in the woods, middle of nowhere in Iowa. And we spent a few days, myself and Thunderhead 289, getting this running. And apparently the internet loved it. And here we are today. It all began right here. At the same time that I've done the most work on this truck as one of the revival vehicles, I've done the least. Actually, I've probably done the most work on the little mods, but that's a project now, so does that even count? I don't know. You got new battery cables though, so you're good to go. Do you remember any of this? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Everyone's wondering where the hell is the F-250? Oh, it's right here. Not then there's barn. And this is the same barn where you encountered the possum inside the Fiat, right? Yeah, where all that began. Yeah, this is the same exact spot. Um, basically, I work on this thing and then I come to a snag I park it and then I do a thousand other things that I find a little more interesting. But unfortunately the internet thinks this is the epitome of vehicles. This rusted out, poop covered 65 F-250. With no windows in it. No windows, no glass, no brakes, nothing. Like what am I gonna do with this thing? We're gonna toss a battery in it, see if it runs and maybe drive it around the yard. Maybe. Or just run through this wall because it has no brakes. Yeah, that's more likely, yeah. Could go either way. Beautiful. Look at the inside, like the dash. Because there's no windshield and because birds live in this barn. Just poop everywhere. It's just poop everywhere. Everything is covered in poop. Such, such is my life. <laughs> I think the poop just makes for better content and people love to watch you suffer. Is this a remote starter? 
I don't know. Is it in neutral? What? Okay, yeah, it is. We didn't even do anything. Well, that's just the battery's hooked up and hit the key. I, that's not a key. It's just a random switch you found. <laughs> Whoever owned it was apparently really into hot air balloons. He was indeed. So there's balloon fiesta stickers all over the thing, which is really interesting. Look, he was a, a balloon champion. Who knows what that means, but it's something. The best balloonist. Has this turned into storage for tires? Yeah, it's a project. It's turned into a shell. Yep. Dylan McCool would be proud. There's a key in this, even. Yeah. The key works, too. All right, key's on. Do I need to hit the key for you? Yeah, if you want. You ready? Yep. What? We got the runner a bit to get the, I think it has gas in it, if I remember right. Go ahead. I like your mounts for your radiator. <laughs> it's still like it was when <laughs> it was in the woods. Yeah. Wait, is there coolant in this one? I might have to fill that before we attempt to drive it. All right, let's All just right. see if she runs first. I mean, it kind of did. What a machine. I don't remember, is this a manual choke? I think it is. Oh, there is a choke in there. It's yeah, pulled pull all the way sucker. out. Give it a it little looks like more. That's all it's got. That's all it's got. I think it has fuel. I don't remember, it's been a while. That's crazy though. We gotta fill up the coolant and uh, throw some gas in her and see if she uh, yard drives. This is how you fill radiators in Iowa. You use the high pressure well pump to fill a bucket and then just let it go. The old feed bucket. Oh. Well, that's right. not good at all. Yeah, we um, might not be driving it. Ever. <laughs> that's a freeze plug, I would imagine. I hope that's a freeze plug. I cycled the antifreeze through this last winter, but apparently it wasn't enough for Iowa's negative 60s. Yikes, that's a lot of that's, water. That's a problem. And thus ends the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> um, I'll see you next time when I get a different F-250 and you guys don't know that or something. We'll just <laughs> out of the oh, man. But she runs. Yeah. So do we need to go drive something else now? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that'll do it. Someone already replaced this freeze plug once with one of the expanding rubber types. And she popped her right out this winter. At least that's an easy fix right there. Hopefully it's just the plug and it didn't like crack the block, but yeah, hey, it did its job maybe. <laughs> Dang it. Just when I thought we were done, oh. Kevin pulls out a moped. Someone <laughs> emailed me asking if they could have this. I'm like, <laughs> they saw it in the video? <laughs> yeah, like, it is, uh, it is mint. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pull on that? All I remember about this thing is it was literally I tried to get it to start because it would crank forever. Oh. <laughs> oh. We ran out of actual cool stuff to work on, so we got a moped. I have to drive something today. <laughs> Has 100 cars, drives a moped. Oh! Oh! Carb stuffy clean She's so close. That's what I remember about this, is it was an adventure to get this thing to start. It was work. <laughs> Come on. Oh. 
Oh, it's getting better. Bush light, you need one in your hand. Take the cables off. <laughs> That's the meaning of speed right there. I just wait for him to eat it. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> On a scale of like uh, Mr. Monopoly to Joe Dirt, how redneck would you say this is? <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> we have struck internet gold kevin brown from junkyard digs everybody forget all the cars we did earlier this was the best content all day wait what Say he'd never ridden a moped? Uh oh. Well, we accidentally just killed Jacob. You okay? Hey, don't use the front brakes on grass. You should have warned me. I thought you never told me you'd never ridden a moped before. Oh God, you okay? You, you good? Got a little grass to the beard. I think we're good. You did a roll, man. Oh my new shirt, dang. <laughs> There was uh, no beer involved before this is the sad part. How about a beer to recover? Yeah, that, that hurt a little. Yeah, it looked like it hurt. It, it locked up the front wheel so fast. I was like, he's going real fast straight. <laughs> how, why is it? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, should we just leave it here? No. There's grass everywhere. Here that was a fun time, guys. Don't use the front brake on a moped on grass. Like some Tylenol in a bottle. Perfect. I haven't opened it yet, but cheers. I don't like these things. <laughs> They're awful. It's the worst thing to ride ever. There it was. That was the Revival Revival video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, we didn't get to drive anything, but we got all of them running, including the one that has a blown freeze plug out the side. So, I called it a success. That was a good time. Your cars did way better than I expected, and you proved me wrong in some ways. Look at that smugness. I don't think we really fought any of them. Nope. Ford's ran, dang it. But anyway... Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this special edition of Sally Speech Up, where we hung out with Junkyard Digs up here in Iowa. If you aren't already subscribed to his channel, which all of you probably are because he has like hundreds of thousands of you guys paying attention, um, go check it out. You'd like some of his content. He pulls old cars out of terrible places and gets them back on the road again. And uh, he's also selling merch now. So you see I'm wearing one of his shirts. So you can go do that, junkyarddigs.com. And uh, you are too, aren't you? Well, yeah, I'm selling hats right now, but maybe shirts at some point. But check out sallyspeed.com for those. But as always, thank you guys for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And for all you guys that came here from Junkyard Digs to support Jacob and what he's doing with his channel, thank you very much. Make sure you subscribe here to Sally Speed Shop. See you next time. My heart, so full. Thanks, Kevin. Of sweat, mosquitoes, and corn. Yeah, buddy. Bush light. Till next time.